Hello and welcome to a new episode of Artist Talks, which is produced by non-profit organization Deep Dive Dance. If you find our project interesting and inspiring, consider to subscribe to our channel. This will help our small community to keep on growing. Hit the like button to help us reach wider audience here on YouTube. Today's guest is a Swedish dancer, choreographer, director and set designer, the one and only Frederick Benke Riedman. Benke is a founding member of street dance collective Bounce from Sweden. And in his artistic journey, he has participated and created original choreographies in many exciting projects, such as Eurovision Song Contest, Nobel Prize, Gala, uh, So You Think You Can Dance, Scandinavia Edition. Get comfortable and let's begin. Hello. Hey. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I'm here. Yes, I want to thank you again for accepting my invitation and knowing how busy and difficult for you to snatch a little bit, an hour of your time. I really appreciate you being here with me. Yeah, thank, no, but it's, it's, it'll be fun, you know. So my first question for you is how and why you started to dance? Uh, well, it was, it was actually in school, you know, there was a there was actually a music teacher teaching a little bit of dance on in school and she basically just put a flyer in my hand and said like, here, you should come and dance on, you know, Mondays at six o'clock. Yeah. And I went home to my and I was 10 years old and I went home to my parents and said like, uh, well, obviously I'm going to go with dance. And they were like, okay. So they, <laughs> you know, brought me over and I guess I felt like, you know, I felt kind of comfortable, you know, with, 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 uh, I've always been into sports and stuff like that. So maybe there was something that clicked a little bit like, oh, that, this is not too hard. So I felt, you know, comfortable with, it. and then, um, and that was couples dancing. So uh -huh. uh, I started like that, you know, with a Swedish uh, thing called Bug and uh, went on to, to compete for many years. <laughs> into a lot of acrobatics you know really doing a lot of acrobatics with with partner and uh, yeah 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 like, that's that's how it all started it's pretty soon it became quite serious if you started to compete and everything yeah it was like you know there was but i was more into it like a sports guy you know i had a kind of sports mentality like oh i'm gonna win this you know yeah and then and then, of course, we did shows. I, I was, I mean, I realize now when I'm older, you know, directing and, and choreographing stuff, that I I always, you know, was the one doing shows in school and like fixing things and being on stage and yada yada. So uh, that was more on the sort of, uh, you know, artistic side of it. Yeah. Uh, but dance for me was still like, you know, a sports thing. You know, I was really going hard for like, you know, world championships and like that. And it was quite successful, you know. As a kid, and then I realized somewhere down the down the road that okay, maybe I need to like work on my you know sort of movements too. Yes. yes. Um, so I went, yeah. So I went to I went to like a jazz class and, and thought that this would be good for me, you know, to start out with. Yeah. And then my partner, I mean, maybe I can tell you the story. My partner, she was she was really good in ballet and jazz and contemporary and all that. So so she was the one actually going like saying to me like no. I'm going to quit dancing with you because I'm going to apply for the ballet academy in Stockholm. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was like, hey, well, don't don't leave me here. I was like, you know, practicing basically every day and then like, okay, what am I going to do? Okay, let's let's do some more classes so, so I started doing more classes, tried ballet. I don't know why, but then I then I ended up, you know, um applying for the same school as her. Uh -huh. And and I got in and she did as well, but she never went to the school uh-huh she changed so, her mind. okay yeah she changed her mind and went back to did some other stuff you know so i i guess i have to thank her for you know into the school yeah, yeah. coming a dancer in the end yeah exactly yeah. yeah so and when when did you meet or discover like street dance styles yeah that was uh it was in i mean 95 doesn't say so but i was like 20 uh so it's quite late you know but that time, especially in Sweden, there wasn't there wasn't any like hip hop street dance going on, you know, basically. Yeah. So we went to LA to take classes, and then I, you know, I just realized, okay, this is happening here now, and you know, took classes, found other places to hang out, and you know, you know, just jam with people, 
Yeah. And uh, I think there was something in the language that connected to me, mm. you know, body wise and physicality and all that. So I, I just, you know, loved it, you know, and then went back and started exploring more. And uh, from that point, there was some, a couple of friends with me uh, going back and forth to LA, you know, like you do when you're, when you're young, you just like suck up everything, you know, and, and then we started doing things on our own, trying to develop a, an own style back in Sweden. And, and from there, we then late, later on formed a group called Bounce, yeah. which was my home for like 13 years. Uh, was it a conscious decision to form this group, Bounce, or it just kind of sort of happened between you? No, that was not, there wasn't like any intention at all, basically. We just wanted to learn more from each other, you know, there was, we were all, you know, separated people like, oh, I know these guys, they're really good, but yeah, you know, you, you watch with envy, you know. Yeah. And then at some point we said like, hey, why don't we go together and practice together, you know, and just learn from each other. And so we started basically training. So that's how we started. And then after a couple of months or something, I don't even remember, but um, we got this gig, you know, really low key, like, you, you know, you can maybe do something at this gymnastics hall, maybe, you know, it's a yeah. couple of people, you know. Yeah. And then it went on from there and we just, you know, one year later we were like, yeah, we have to do a stage show. We have to put, put street dance on stage, basically, yeah. So. Yeah. But it, it was back then in Sweden quite revolutionary. And even in, uh, I would say at least, I mean, Europe, you know, and of course it happens at the same time in the whole world, you know, it's, yeah. it's not that we're that unique, you know, but, uh, but it, was, it was really in the beginning of it. And we quite fast, you know, got some recognition from also being quite brave, I think, in our choices, you know, mixing it with Lindy Hop, as I talked before, you know, putting tap together, you know, to see how, how the roots, um, you know, blended in together with hip hop and, you know, also putting ballet into it to yeah. see the, the, the contrast of it and, you know, and, you know, trying to find a new expression, basically. What is your, uh, like, a strongest memory with the time from Bounce? <sighs> <laughs> I mean, all the discussions we had, because we, had, we never had a leader, you know. We were like a total, total democracy for 13 years. Uh, and with endless discussions. Good and bad because you know it has really you know I think shaped me as a choreographer and director that I'm always trying to include everyone and even though I have to lead the work you know I, I always try to find a uh, what do you say environment that is like open for suggestions you know. <laughs> That, that kind of discussion has made me a sort of tolerant person, I guess. Or, but I think it's really nice. It really gives good results to make everybody a part of a vision. So it was so strong. You know, sometimes when we did things, people around us, you know, later on when we moved on to do bigger stages and tours and stuff like that, we were the most uh, difficult people to work with because we were so strong, you know. It was like not one person coming into meetings. It was like seven people coming into meetings and like, uh, no, we're going to fly from the ceiling and do this and this, that. And everybody was like, uh, you know, that's too expensive. That's, we can't do that. And in the end, we ended up doing it somehow. Now, of course, you have created many, many together as a bounce, like a lot of uh, performances or ballets or, or shows. Uh, and, uh, uh, but one of them uh, I saw myself, it's Insane in the Brain. No. Uh, and it's a fantastic show. Would you tell those who have never seen it or just a little bit briefly about this work? Yeah, it's, uh, it's basically an adaptation of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, the film from the 70s with institutionalized, mental institutionalized people. And we were, you know, basically doing that and really telling a story. And I think it, it really worked well with dance. Thank you. 
for me, it was really taking the next step of de developing a, a narrative in dance and trying to try to tell a story with that. So was it was it the first uh, show that had a clear narrative, like a storyline? Yeah, in that sense that it's so you know like like a film basically. Yeah. You know? uh, before we had done stuff with easier plots. You know, not such, not so much character development, and you know. So in this plot, every every character had a development. You know, and, you know, you had a you had a start, you had a changing uh, point, and an ending point for each character, and that that we never worked with, and that was really fantastic to go into that work. And I think that I always always been interested in doing that, and I think that has led me into theater now. famous last bounce that happened in Globen for how many people, like uh, how many thousands? Yeah, that was weird. That was, um, I mean, we, we, we just said, uh, we're going to go out with a bang, you know. So we, we rented this arena in Sweden, which is like a more than 10,000 seater. And we sold out like five shows in one weekend, which is like 54,000 people. And uh, I think, I mean, for me, it's, I'm really proud of that moment because it really put not only like street dance, it put dance on the map, you know, yeah. to yeah. have that many people coming to watch a, a fucking simple dance group. I think that for me, that's amazing. And fantastic moment and but it was so weird because we did those shows people were like fucking you know we were like rock stars you know yeah yeah uh, And then on Sunday, but then on Monday, we were like, okay, so let's empty our little uh, studio that we had, you know, and just went to the, you know, and garbage disposal and just threw it all away. And then like, okay, that was bounce. What led to the end of the bounce? Why was it a um, kind of democratic decision as well? Yeah, I would say so. Even though I know some people might have wanted to continue. Um, but I think there was a... It's like two things for, in, from my perspective, at least. Uh, one, our bodies basically were really tired. You know, we were having difficulties when we, because we did, you know, long runs. We did like a season of 75 shows, you know, um, and we were injured, you know, people had pain. Yeah. It was really hard. And we, you know, we're not like a company. We were like seven people and we had maybe one swing, you know, understudy. But I also felt, you know, artistically, I felt that we as a group had probably reached our peak, you know, the sort of the go and the spirit that we had was, I felt that it was probably on the peak and maybe it would have been going down if we would have continued. So I think it was a hard but good decision, at least for me personally, uh, and I hope 
the other people as well felt the same. I think so they did actually, yeah. As a creator, either director or choreographer, what, what inspires you to, to creativity? Hmm. I think now these days, I think it is mostly me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very egocentric. No, but it's, it has to do with, um, I want to deal with stuff that, that I can uh, relate to myself. You know, if I have a struggle with something, uh, whatever topic it is or something that I feel involved in, I think that's, that's always a key factor for me to, to go into a kind of work mm -hmm. and to find that. And then, but on the more outside, I think anything can inspire you, you know, all kinds of arts, basically, you know, music films, museums, you know, contemporary art. What I'm trying to do now is to really find my own language. I mean, I've been in, I've been in theater, you know, especially with bounce. I know I'm very interested in all parts of theater, you know, so I'm very involved in everything like, you know, lighting, I do set design as well. Um, costume is my worst side, but I'm interested in it, you know, so and we've always been doing it all on our own with Bounce. It was like really a self-made group. So I've learned so much uh, without an education. I think that's... that's Yeah, that probably gave you a good uh, confidence to take a next step because of the experiences you had. Yeah, exactly. And you, and you know, you can always, you know, sometimes you come, you know, when you're young, you, you come up with ideas that people can be like, yeah, 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 I did that 10 years ago. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter because it's, you know, for every person and every age you are in, I think you need to find those revelations. And it's better that you do them yourself than someone tells you, like, you know, you can do this. Try that. You know, you have to f invent it yourself. With your work and, and your style, you obviously uh, uh, attract a lot of young audience like teenagers or younger um, adults, you know, mm. that otherwise would probably never made it to theater. Have you ever thought of, about that? And is it important for you or is it something that just kind of naturally happened? I never really thought about it, actually. I don't, you know, I just come out, came out of, out of meeting, you know, for a new production. And it's always like, yeah, who's the target group? Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I'm so tired of this. I just do, you know, I just do good shit. And if people like it, you know, uh, I, I try to do good shit and if people like it they will like it I don't care with which age of course I know it has a market strategy or, and everything you know but you know I never really I think that's also something to, that I've learned I've never tried to do anything for someone else yeah. you, you know do it for yourself what you're interested in yourself then it it will become something and, and also it's a you know it's a sort of, sort of protection you know if someone doesn't like it but you really like it mm then you can be happy with yourself, you know. It gives you a more uh, perspective on what you create yourself mm -hmm. so that you can move on to your next project without being hyped or down by the, the response it got from the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, If yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And, that's, and that's important for me because I'm, I'm a sensitive person, even though I might not come out as a, as a person like that. But I think it's it, it stops my creativity, you know. So I need to do stuff that I... I own myself and because then I can value them to see, oh, I could have done that better. And, but that was, I was happy with, you know, Yeah. then I can move on to my next project and say like, yeah, yeah, let's not do that again. Or something. Mixing different styles in, in your creative work, different dance styles. It's also quite interesting and quite unique as well. What pushes you to do that? I think it's important to, to try to stay brave, you know, mm -hmm. not, not to be afraid of, of, of something, you know, and I think that's a, that's a strength that I want to keep, you know, but it's, but it's a lot of fun, you know, when you, when you can try to do that. And I, I've learned, I think that's something you learn, you know, of course you suck at things in the beginning, <laughs> but if you, but also you can also surround yourself with good people and you can, you can try to do those like collaborations and, and, and genre mixes and, and everything that will create from that, you know, it will create something new, I think. And that's always been interesting to me. I mean, it's like, you know, surprising the audience is something that I always want to do. And it can be in any, any sense, you know, because those are the moments when I've myself been to theater and I've seen like, oh shit, I've never seen that. Yeah. You know, those are the memories that stays with me. I have a, you know, 
I have a little short list of like moments from like, doom, 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 you know, and it's, I just love that, you know, and if I can bring that to someone else, you know, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And working for TV, like uh, how's it different to create something that people will not see live, but will only see on, on the screen? Is that a different approach that you have to take for that or? Yeah, I, I would say it's a totally different world. I mean, if you talk about dance, I think it's, uh, I mean, I'm sure you know that you, yourself. I mean, since you choreograph and everything in dance, uh, just how you can, you know, play around with so much more stuff with the camera, you know, especially during this pandemic, you know, I, I think we all have <laughs> been researching our video skills. <laughs> Now it's, it's, it's kind of sad because I've gone back to my normal, you know, more theater, theatrical work. But it was really fun, you know, to, to do those kind of things with the camera. And there's, there's a, there's, I think there's so much more to explore, really, in sense of, you know, expressing yourself and, and developing dance. Because it's really interesting how the, you know, when you move the, 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 the person that's watching, you know. Yeah. It's Are just you like a totally different universe to the whole thing. And I want to ask you about, it's in Swedish, for those who don't know, if you're watching, you're not from Sweden, Varofer. And in, in, in English, yeah. Light of Spring, this uh, uh, production that you put on stage in Stadt Theater, right? It yeah. was there, which is, uh, had a tremendous success. Can you tell what was the work about and how you approached the theme and the music of Stravinsky? Um, I mean, I, I did it like in two parts because, you know, the original music is not that long. It's like 38 minutes or something. Yeah. Depending on. We wanted to do a, a first act to it. So... And I had a lot of people, you know, uh, there was 20 dancers, which is a lot for me to work with. Um, and uh, it was really about, you know, life and, and death and the sort of uh, the circle of existence, you know, you, you're born and then you die and what lives on and everything. So I wanted to do something that was contrasting to that. Now I was been into to robots mm -hmm. and I think, you know, robots were originally made for helping people in with hard labor. And it's, it's, a, it's a physical uh, relation to your own body, you know. If you, if you take away all the work with your body, you will just sit there in the end. And that's what robots do. And we are, we're getting closer and closer to that. So, so what I did it was I did a duet with a robot. actually was, you know, really robotic to begin with. And I was the human, you know, but my body was basically like lowering it. So I was basically dying on stage. But the robot just, you know, got better and better, especially with the AI and everything. with the robot programming for three months like every day and the task was to make it human you know it was really an industrial robot and but really trying to find you know those movements where the robots were I mean in the end the robot were really taking care of me you know lifting me dragging me across the floor and I think that it really touched people you know in that sense that you could relate to it and it was very existential in that sense that how, I mean, there's so many questions, like how are we going to live next to robots? Yes. Can, you give, can you give a robot um, an identity? You know, can it, can it have feelings? Or why do you, why do you even uh, think that it has feelings? Because that was 
all the reactions like I really love the robots you know in the end <laughs> and I really chose a robot that doesn't look like a person you know yeah so it, so it was only it was only the movements and that's I think that's interesting how some movements can be scary and how some movements can be gentle you know mm-hmm. um, so that was I think it was really interesting work and it was me dancing with it that was like the last time I was on stage and <laughs> because now I'm just like too broken <laughs> <laughs> you need a robot. <laughs> yeah, but the robot is still there, you know. No, but I think that was also a part of my own life. I guess there's some dancers like hearing this. And I think we all have the same feeling for how our identity and the, you know, how we're going to live our lives when you feel that your body is not with you anymore. And I was, I was really in that break of that, you know, being like 44, 45 when I did that. And it's, it's really hard, you know, it's something that you have to deal with. And I was... It was for me it was also good work to do you know because i thought about it so much and so you come out on the other side you know with another perspective which is also healing in in a, in a sense what scares you the most except death no i mean uh, okay here it is um being lonely being lonely yeah i think that's my worst uh, thing Yeah. And of course, that is like my next project. No, but it's, I have a project. I have a project in the future, oh, actually. That for real? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, yeah. I think it's always been that, you know, I've been very, you know, um, very hard worker to fit in and not be outside, you know, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes it has put me where I'm not myself anymore, you know, just to fit in, you know, and, and be loved by everyone. Yeah. You know, not just a couple of the people, just like everyone. Yeah. And that is not so healthy, maybe, you know, sometimes. Yeah. But it's um, it's interesting. You can, yeah, loneliness is also very, you know, especially today, you know, people are getting more and more lonely, I think, which is, which is sad. And I think there has to come a reaction to it soon or later. Soon and or later. we get more connected and, and lonely in, in general. Exactly, yeah. So, exactly. Absolutely, yes. situation. Yeah. 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 What would be a dream project for you? Obviously, I haven't done so much work at you know opera houses. You know, to really work with a big, you know, dance ensemble. You know, that would be great because I think I'm I'm pretty good at it actually. <laughs> I would just love to to be able to do that. But apart from that, I would love to, you know, I would like to. I don't know. I never really had a dream project, but it, it might be to do, you know, invent a new way of movement. Let's keep it movement, you know, but it will probably become a dance. But, uh, but you know, in that sense that you maybe film movements in a new way that has never been done before, or, you know, to just find a new technique, how to interact with people through... I had this project during the pandemic that an idea that we went quite far with, but in the end it, it turned out that the technique isn't there yet. Uh-huh. Uh, but how to interact with people on a digital platform, um, but really inter, you know, and make a, a story go through that people will be, because a lot of, you know, there's been tons of performances streamed from a stage or wherever, you know, But the, the problem is that there's no interaction, you know, and I think that's what, even though you, if you sit in a theater, you know, it's not interactive in that sense that you tell someone what to do, but but it's but it's still interaction, if you know what I mean, you know, there's always a, that would be, might be a dream project to, to realize that, you know, how to present maybe dance in a, in a digital way that is really connected, you know. There's been a question from the audience who is watching. I want to ask, uh, what is your criteria to choose a dancer for a project? Uh, okay, like three things. I mean, you, it depends on the project, of course. But of course, uh, full uh, contact with your whole body mm-hmm. in that sense that you can, you know, relate to different body parts and, you know, work with them. Musicality obviously together with music, but also musicality without music and courage, I think, you know, dare to be bad, dare to try new things, be curious and be brave. 
those that, that kind of thing. Why dance is important? Because I think there's there is something um, very on a, on a like core level in the human body that we need to express ourselves through dance, and that is what everybody has inside them, and that's why it's it's for me it's like beyond. It's like on another level, you know, when it really touches you. And I'm just, I just want people to realize that because there's a lot of people in the world that say like, no, I'm not into dance, but no, you are. If you just let it, you know, be a part of you. But that's what I I was mentioning before about bringing all kind of, uh, that your work attracts uh, young people a lot. Yeah. And I think it's so valuable, even though it's not conscious for you or you have never made it as your goal, so to say. Uh, but I think it's so great that um, with work that you do, that it brings a young uh, audience into theater and then they can be like, oh, wow, this is actually great for them to have that opportunity that somebody, uh, you know, engage them with that. I think it's so great today and it's so important. Yeah, but you, you probably said it better than I did because Maybe that's been a mission, you know, to to bring dance to people that didn't know they loved dance. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's great. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down actually. So yeah, yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah. otherwise you forget it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this interview interesting. Check our playlist right here on YouTube with all the previous interviews, and let us know in the comment section below which artist we should invite here in the future. Remember to support dance and art. From me, Anton Valbauer, and on behalf of Deep Dive Dance, we thank you until next time. <laughs>